Today is Wednesday, July 28th. What to know about emotional testimony from Capitol Police officers about what they went through on January 6th and why some lawmakers don't want to see any more hearings like that. Also, the CDC changed course again, what it now has to say about vaccinated people wearing masks. Plus, a shocking Olympic exit from the best gymnast in the world, a possible breakthrough in cancer treatment, and some new safety policies for teenagers on Instagram. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in about 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Lacey Evans filling in for Erica Mandy during her maternity leave. You ready? Let's do this. It was an emotional first public hearing for lawmakers investigating the January 6th Capitol riot. Four police officers who defended the U.S. Capitol that day described how they were confronted by a violent, angry mob. They spoke about being beaten by rioters and thinking they were going to die. One of them, who was also an Army veteran, says he was more afraid to work at the Capitol than in Iraq. He said rioters were calling him a traitor, a disgrace, and shouting that he should be executed. Another officer, who was black, said several rioters called him a racial slur. In the end, about 140 Capitol and D.C. police officers were hurt trying to fend off rioters. Some of them say they're still dealing with physical and mental injuries more than six months later. All four officers who spoke on Capitol Hill yesterday begged the lawmakers to dig deeper into exactly how the attack happened. They say that's the plan. They want to know exactly who coordinated the riot and how to prevent another one. But a good chunk of Congress doesn't want this investigation to happen at all. Remember, the Senate voted against a bipartisan commission that wouldn't have included any sitting members of Congress. So this one is being led by the Democratic-controlled House. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi ended up picking all of the 13 lawmakers assigned to it. Her Republican counterpart, Kevin McCarthy, was supposed to pick five of them, but Pelosi vetoed two of his choices for being too closely aligned with former President Trump. So McCarthy ended up pulling all five. Pelosi settled on 11 Democrats and two Republicans for the committee. All 13 voted to impeach President Trump for his role in inciting the riot. So Republicans are calling it a politically motivated investigation. They say Pelosi and the rest of the team are just trying to make Republicans look bad, and they're not asking tough questions about their own leadership. In the past, Republican leaders have also said another investigation isn't necessary since law enforcement agencies are already on it. So far, more than 400 people have been arrested in connection to the attack. That number is expected to grow as the investigations continue. The man who shot and killed eight people in the Atlanta area back in March is going to be spending the rest of his life in prison. He pleaded guilty to murder and was sentenced to four consecutive life sentences plus 35 years. Remember, back in March, he shot employees and customers at three different Georgia spas. Six of the eight people he killed were Asian women. Robert Aaron Long still faces hate crime charges for targeting the victims based on their sex and race. And if he's convicted on those two, he could get the death penalty. But in court yesterday, the shooter explained that he decided to murder people because he had an addiction to sex. He said he used to receive sexual services from the spas he targeted, and he wanted to eliminate the temptation. No matter what his motivation was, this shooting sparked a national outcry against a rise in anti-Asian violence. Rallies and protests have been held around the country. Whether you've gotten your COVID-19 vaccine or not, you'll probably want to keep your mask handy. The CDC now says if you live in a hot spot, you should go back to wearing masks indoors anytime you're in public. And yes, that recommendation applies to vaccinated people too. By hotspot, we mean anywhere that has at least 50 new COVID-19 cases per 100,000 people. That's 60% of counties around the U.S. right now, and it includes every county in Arkansas, Florida, and Louisiana. The Federal Health Organization also reversed course and said masks should be required for all students, teachers, and staff at schools nationwide. The Biden administration says the recommendation might change again if a larger percentage of the U.S. gets vaccinated. But for now, it says masks can help keep outbreaks from multiplying and forcing lockdowns or school closures. Remember, the CDC just issues recommendations, though. It's up to local leaders to decide whether to follow that guidance and enforce mandates. Los Angeles and St. Louis are among those who have reimposed mask requirements, and more could be coming. But many Republican leaders are slamming the CDC over its latest announcement. They say now it should be up to each individual person to decide whether they want to wear a mask, not the government. 
It turns out the pandemic put American kids about four or five months behind in school. That's according to a new report from the consulting firm McKinsey & Company. It looked at test scores from the end of the last school year and compared them to student scores from previous years. It found students in grades K through 12 were testing on average 10 points lower in math and nine points lower in reading. The numbers were even worse for students in low-income schools or schools where Black or Hispanic kids make up most of the student bodies. The New York Times points to a few reasons for the disparity. One is minority or low-income students didn't have as much access to technology, so remote learning was more of a struggle. Also, there were higher rates of COVID-19 cases and unemployment in their communities. It's not too late to turn things around, but it might not be easy. The report says action needs to be taken, so today's students don't face disadvantages over their lifetimes. More news is coming up, but first, a quick break for our sponsor. Here's your main host, Erica Mandy, to talk about HelloFresh. Have you tried America's number one meal kit yet? With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. No taking up your entire Sunday to meal plan, no grocery store runs required, and no greasy takeout night after night. Look, I don't know a lot about how to cook, and frankly, I don't like spending a lot of time in the kitchen. But with HelloFresh, I always enjoy the process of cooking, and I'm always super impressed with how tasty the meals are. In fact, all the recipes have been designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure both deliciousness and simplicity. So you should give it a try, too. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Newsworthy14 and use code Newsworthy14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. And HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need to easily change your delivery day, your food preferences, or your plan size. And, of course, you can always skip a week whenever you need. Again, go to HelloFresh.com slash Newsworthy14 and use code Newsworthy14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. It was a huge shock for Team USA and the rest of the sports world. Star athlete Simone Biles, who is widely considered the greatest gymnast of all time, pulled out of the team finals in Tokyo. She left the competition after the first event, which was vault. Biles seemed to get lost in the air during her routine, and she landed awkwardly. After that, she told her teammates they would have to go on without her. Biles said she didn't have a physical injury, but she was struggling with her mental health. Her teammates ultimately won the silver medal for the U.S., with Biles cheering them on from the sidelines. The gold went to gymnasts from Russia for the first time in nearly three decades. And early this morning, USA Gymnastics announced that Biles won't be competing in this week's individual events either. Another gymnast, Jade Carey, will take her spot. Even though American fans might have been disappointed that Team USA didn't dominate in gymnastics, Biles has been getting a lot of support, and Team USA is now leading the overall medal count. Star swimmer Katie Ledecky added to that tally today. She won a gold medal in the 1,500-meter freestyle. This is the first time women have been able to race that far at the Olympics, even though the men have been doing it for decades. And of course, there's a lot more competition ahead. Some of today's biggest events include women's and men's basketball, cycling, and diving. Researchers in Texas have developed a new strategy for treating the deadliest form of brain cancer. A team at the Houston Methodist Neurological Institute created a magnetic helmet that's said to be able to dramatically shrink tumors. The researchers tested the therapy on a patient with end-stage brain cancer. The man wore the helmet between two and six hours a day for about a month and even did treatments at home with his wife's help. He ended up dying from an unrelated injury, but his family allowed an autopsy, which showed the tumor in the man's brain had shrunk shrunk by nearly a third in just a few weeks. The doctors who developed the magnetic helmet say they believe the treatment could one day replace radiation and chemotherapy. But more studies will need to be completed first. Tech giants Apple, Google, and Microsoft are pulling in some of their biggest profits ever. Combined, the three companies reported more than $50 billion in profits between April and June. Apple did the best, making almost $22 billion in that three-month period. That's its best third-quarter profit in company history. It was boosted in a big way by hot demand for iPhones, but Mac computers and iPads have been doing well, too. Alphabet, which owns Google, reported a profit of more than $18.5 billion. That's more than twice its profits from the same time last year. It's been getting a lot more money from ad sales, especially from retail, travel, and entertainment companies. Then there's Microsoft. Its profits increased by nearly 50% compared to last year, and demand for software, cloud services, and office tools were major factors. More big numbers from the tech industry are still to come this week. Facebook is expected to reveal its quarterly earnings today. Amazon is on deck for tomorrow. 
Instagram is making changes that might help protect its youngest users. From now on, accounts for kids younger than 16 will be private by default. The idea is to block strangers from reaching out to the young teens. Users can still switch to a public account if they choose. But Instagram says it'll show users a notification first, explaining the benefits of staying private. The company also said it's using new technology to root out potential child predators. If an adult acts suspiciously on the app, Instagram will stop them from interacting with any young users. Also going forward, advertisers will be more restricted when targeting anyone younger than 18. Companies can target their ads based only on users' age, gender, and location. They are banned from using more advanced targeting methods, which involve collecting data on users' interests and online activity. Already, users are supposed to be at least 13 to sign up for Instagram. That's it for the main news today, but it's now time for Work Wednesday, when we break down one interesting career or work-related news story. But first, here's Erica again with a word from our sponsor, Noom. In so many aspects of life, it's important to know the why, to ask why you want to do something, not just what you'll do to get there. Well, Noom wants you to focus on why you want to change your relationship with food and why you have certain health goals. From there, Noom uses a cognitive behavioral approach to empower you with the knowledge to build smarter, more sustainable habits and behaviors. Noom knows one size does not fit all and that everybody's journey is different. So you let them know your personal health goals and Noom customizes a program just for you. I appreciate that Noom says no food is completely off limits because it's about balance. And you know, I love balance in news and in nutrition. In fact, Noom has published more than 25 peer-reviewed scientific journal articles about the science that goes into their approach to helping people achieve a healthier way of life. They combine an evidence-based approach with empathy. So start building better habits for healthier, long-term results. Sign up for your trial at Noom.com slash Newsworthy. Again, you can sign up for your trial at Noom, spelled N-O-O-M, dot com slash Newsworthy. Now back to Work Wednesday. After more than a year of working through a pandemic, it seems Americans are ready for vacations, and they're requesting days off in higher numbers than usual. Typically, American workers waste about a quarter of their paid time off. But that's starting to change. A recent survey from the U.S. Travel Association found nearly 8 in 10 employees are planning to use more vacation days this year than they usually do, and almost half say they'll take longer trips than in years past. The survey also shows more workers are planning to unplug from work during time off. Off, meaning they're avoiding business emails and phone calls. This trend is happening as more Americans report feeling increasingly burned out compared to last year. For the first time this summer, some companies are even shutting down their whole offices to give workers a break. Those businesses include social media management company Hootsuite and private equity firm Carlyle Group. All right, thank you for listening today. We'll catch you up on more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 